Okay, completing the square. This is the final way to solve quadratic problems. Um, I will say generally students prefer the quadratic formula over completing the square, but completing the square is helpful in certain cases. You know, every case has its own best, own best method. All right, so like I said, it's used to solve quadratics. Like the quadratic formula, it always works. So every single quadratic problem can be solved by completing the square. And what happens in completing the square is it forces a perfect square trinomial. Okay, we dealt a lot with perfect square trinomials, PST, I abbreviate it. Uh, it forces a perfect square trinomial. Why do we want to force a perfect square trinomial? Well, there's two reasons. One is that it's easy to factor. We know this pattern. We know you guys should have this pattern memorized already. Uh, it's easy to factor. And then once it is factored, it's easy to solve. You solve using square roots. So you're just solving directly for x in that case. How do we form a perfect square trinomial? Or what is a perfect square trinomial? Well, it's a binomial squared. It's binomial times itself. So a plus b squared is a plus b times a plus b. A quick foil, first outside, inside, last. Results in a squared plus ab plus ba plus b squared. Okay, first outside, inside, last. And inside and outside can combine a, b, and b, a are the same. So we have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That's a perfect square trinomial. Okay, and we started from its factored form. Same thing on the other side, except with a minus. What happens if there's a minus in the middle? I'm not going to go through it all again, but it's a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So that sign in the middle, the sign in the middle of the binomial becomes the middle of the trinomial. Okay. Use the above identities to complete the squares. Well, notice in these that your a value is 1. That's going to be a key point in this. So your a value in here is 1. So it's not going to be exactly the same as those first two. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to fill in that last blank. That blank is where the b squared is in the formula. So how do we make 2ab become b squared? Or really just 2b because a is 1. Whoops, I'm supposed to delete that. So how do you get 2b to become b squared? Well, you would have to divide by 2 and then square it. So this b divided by 2 squared is going to be an important part. Okay. And then it factors into x plus b divided by 2. Okay, So half of b squared factors into x, the sign in the middle, half of b. So in our own words, it's basically just that. Add half of b squared, or b over 2 squared. And like I said, that's the key to completing the square. All right, so we're going to use that rule to complete the following squares. Take the number in the middle, the number in front of x, divide it by 2, and square it. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 squared is 36. So 36 adds to the trinomial, and then the factored form is just x minus 6, just x minus half of b. Okay. Why minus? Well, that minus sign is in the middle. The second one, half the number in front of x. 5 over 2 squared is, you square the top number, you square the bottom number, so it's 25 over 4. So you add 25 over 4, and then you add half of b in the factored form. Finally, half of a half squared. Half of a half is a fourth, and a fourth squared, again, you square the top, you square the bottom, is 1 over 16. So that goes on the trinomial side, and then x, sign in the middle, half of b, half of a half is a fourth. Again, those are just, we, it was just factoring. It was half of b squared, and then the right side was just factoring. So now we're going to solve the specific steps for completing the square. First step is it has to be in that in this form. It has to be in a special form. All the x's have to be on the left side. All the constants have to be on the right. So we're going to have to move that 27 over. So in fact, we're solving 3x squared minus 24x minus 27 equals 0. First step is to move the 27 over. Okay. You want all the variable parts on the left, all the constant stuff on the right. The second part 
If you're doing completing the square, you cannot have an A value. The A value in front has to be 1. So if there is an A value, you have to divide it out. So we're going to have to divide everything by 3, leaving us with x squared minus 8x equals 9. Okay. Now we're going to do what we just did. Variable change from B to D because we, you know, we can't use the same one. So we're going to add D divided by 2 squared to both sides. Figure out that number in front of x, cut it in half, square it. We end up with 16. Half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16. So we're going to add 16 to both sides. Okay. Remember, you're not allowed to change problems unless you do the exact same thing to both sides. If you add 16 on both sides, it's not changing the problem. The left side is now a perfect square trinomial. So it's going to factor into a perfect square trinomial. It's going to be, oh, and then the right side, we're just going to simplify. So the perfect square trinomial, x, sign in the middle, half the b value, x minus 4 squared. Always follows that pattern. Right side, 9 plus 16 is 25. And then lastly, is we're using the square root property to solve. Okay. Remember, for the square root property, it's, you have to have the square part isolated. Square root both sides. The square root and the square cancel out, so the left side is x minus 4. The right side is plus or minus 5. And then finally solve x minus 4 can equal 5, or x minus 4 can equal negative 5. Solve both for x by adding, x, adding 4 to both sides for both equations. And you end up with x equaling 9 and x equaling negative 1. So I want to add nice answers to it because that one is actually factorable. We could have just factored, you know, using product sum method. Uh, but I like to start with one that works out nicely first. So again, so we could have factored GCF and then factored product sum. This one's not factorable. So you would have to use the quadratic formula, but now we're going to use completing the square. Okay. So step one, this is kind of more straightforward steps. Move to x squared plus bx equals c form. So that means we're going to have to move the 2 that's currently on the left, and we're going to have to move to the right. And I notice I leave gaps in the middle because I know I'm going to have to add something to both sides. Step 2 is to find b divided by 2 squared. The b value is the number in front of x, which is negative 6. So negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. Step three is you're going to add that number, whatever it is, in this case 9, you're going to add it to both sides. So add 9 to both sides. Okay. So it's going to go in those two gaps that I leave. Okay. That's going to leave us with x squared minus 6x plus 9. And on the right side, I'll negative 2 plus 9. Step four is the factor. Factor the left side. The left side is a perfect square trinomial. It's always going to factor into x, whatever sign is in the middle, b divided by 2. Always. Always the same pattern. And then on the right side, we're just going to simplify. It's going to be adding two numbers together. All right, so like I said, x, sign in the middle, half the b value. Half of 6 is 3. Put the square in there. Negative 2 plus 9 is 7. And now into step 5, solve. Solve using square roots. Okay. Square root both sides. Solve for x. So x minus 3 squared equals 7. Square root both sides. The square and the square root cancel out. Left with x minus 3 on the left plus or minus the square root of 7 on the right. Okay. Like I said, this wasn't factorable, which means we're not going to get a nice answer. Uh, we're going to have x minus 3 equals square root of 7, x minus 3 equals negative square root of 7. I'm going to write in an exact form and approximate, but we're just adding 3 to both sides in both equations. And you get x equals the square root of 7 plus 3, which is approximately 5.65. And on the right side, negative square root of 7 plus 3. 
is approximately 0 0.65, no, 0 0.35. All right, so let's recap that. What did we do? First step is move it into that form. x squared plus bx equals c. Constants on the right, nothing in front of x squared. Part two, find b divided by 2 squared. Add that to both sides. Okay. Factor and then solve. Okay. All right, this one, step one, put it in the form. Okay. This one has two issues. It has a 27 that has to move over. So we're going to subtract 27 over. But it also has a number in front of x squared, which isn't allowed for completing the square. So we're going to have to divide everything by that a value. So divide everything by 4. So we're in, now we're in the form x squared minus 6x equals negative 27 over 4. Okay. That was step 1. Put it in the correct form. Step 2. Find b divided by 2 squared. b in this case is negative 6 again. Okay. So this one's going to be 9. It's not always going to be 9. I know these two examples were both 9, though. All right. Add that 9 to both sides. So we now have x squared minus 6x plus 9 on the left, and you have negative 27 over 4 plus 9 on the right. Okay. The left side is a perfect square trinomial, and it's going to factor into x the sign in the middle, and then half of b squared, so x minus 3 squared. And on the right side, instead of adding 9, we want common denominator, so we're going to add 36 over 4. Negative 27 plus 36 is 9, 9 over 4. And now we solve. Okay, but let's go through and do the steps again. Step 1 is put it in the correct form. Step 2 is find b over 2 squared. Step 3, add that to both sides. Step 4, factor. And then step 5, solve. Okay. Square root both sides. x minus 3 equals plus or minus square root of a fraction. You take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. 9 was a perfect square. 4 is a perfect square. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 4 is 2. So it's just 3 halves. And then add 3 to both sides. X equals 3 halves, which is 1.5 plus 3. And X equals negative 1.5 plus 3. You get 4.5 and 1.5. Okay. All right, so again, it works every time. Again, most people like the quadratic formula because we've been doing it longer. But uh, completing the square is an important part of algebra.